Oh, boys and girls, our Tenerife adventure starts right here. It's actually the day before we're going to Tenerife because I figured I'd show you the, the parking night before hotel situation. We're flying at 20 past six tomorrow morning. We didn't fancy driving through the middle of the night and doing all that nonsense. So we figured hotel at the airport seems like a good plan. We've got to get parking at the airport anyway. So we've done a combined deal and we're going to show you the combined deal. I'll let you know how much it costs at the end of the video, but this is where we've parked. We're flying from Luton. This is much further than any Luton hotel car park I've been to before. This is the Air Parks purple car park in a place called Slip End, which is actually the opposite side of the M1 to where Luton is. So I think the shuttle bus that we're about to get on is probably going to be quite the journey. But theoretically, if everything I read on the internet goes to plan, the hotel we're staying in should be right next to the airport terminal. So fingers crossed. That'll be the next shot. I can't really show you the in-betweeny bit because if we come round here, you'll see we've got quite the boot full of stuff that obviously I'm gonna have to carry the majority of. So we'll see you at the terminal shortly. Well, it's not quite the terminal, but as you can see, there are aeroplanes behind me, which means the sound is probably absolutely hideous. At the hotel itself, we are here. This is the Holiday Inn Express. It is supposedly the closest hotel to the terminal here at Luton Airport. But if you've got any kind of mobility problems like Anna has at the moment, she's got a torn meniscus, don't be fooled into thinking nearest hotel to the terminal means the hotel is near to the terminal. We got dropped off by the airport transfer bus. It took about 15 minutes for the airport transfer bus to get us to the terminal. And then it was about a 10 minute walk, largely uphill, which for me was fine. For Anna would normally be fine, but she is struggling a little bit with her knee now. She has had a cortisone injection in her knee, so she's not on the stick anymore and is improving, but she did find that a little bit of a challenge, especially the uphill bit. So bear that in mind if you're considering doing this. But location wise, like I say, it's the nearest one to the airport. We are literally on the back fence of Luton Airport. As you can see, there's a variety of planes there. They are very noisy. And because Anna is a little bit aeroplane obsessed, we made sure to make a special request on the booking that we had a room with a view of said aeroplanes. I think this one is our room, otherwise somebody is about to get a big surprise um, in there. Come to the window we should have an Anna who as you can see walking without a cane I don't know if you can see her in the reflection in the reflection but there she is that's our room huh yeah she's saying her cortisone injection has worked and it definitely has she is walking much better without the stick and there we have the view of lots of aeroplanes I mean we are so close to some of these that I could almost reach out and touch them. I imagine that's probably a bad idea. We're flying at 6.20 tomorrow morning. So we've booked a taxi to pick us up from here at the airport to get us down to or here at the airport hotel to get us back down to the terminal for 4.20 so we can check our luggage. In fact, this shows you just how uphill this hotel is. So the actual terminal building, if you've not been to Luton before, you go under that little underpass under the road and it's just around the corner, the other side of that orange building, which I think is the EasyJet building. Uh, so we had to come all the way up here. You can see it's a gradual incline all the way up here. This staircase would have been an option, but Anna can't really do stairs at the moment. So we had to walk all the way around a slope, all the way around to the front of the hotel, which as you can imagine, didn't go down very well. But if we continue heading back this way, you can see there's parking down there. We weren't allowed to park here, so we've parked way away from the airport where we were before. But we can just about poke through the barriers and see just how close we are to these airplanes, which is very, very cool. And in fact, over there, you can just see a Ryan airplane turning around at the moment. I'm not quite sure where the runway itself is. I don't know if we're going to see stuff taking off, but you've got planes taxiing over there. I guess this is more of a spot where they're kind of parked up. But it's pretty cool. Nice location. What is also very nice is as we were checking in, we were asked what time we're checking out in the morning. We said we need to be at the terminal for 4.20. They said, would you like us to book you a taxi? 
Yes, please. OK, we'll book it for 10 past four. It only takes about 10 minutes to get to the terminal. £12, you can pay the driver when you're, uh, when you're picked up in the morning. So our taxi is booked from here to there. So that's one thing we don't have to worry about. And also, she said, because it's obviously a hotel right next to the airport, they're aware people are going to be doing very early starts when they stay here. So breakfast actually starts at 4 a.m. So we will be able to dive in, grab a little bit of breakfast in that 10 minute window between waking up, checking out and getting on the, uh, getting in the taxi. There's that same Ryanair plane from before. So I guess they do taxi past here as they head towards the runway. So we're gonna get some pretty decent views from where we are, I think, which is very cool. I have no idea if you've heard any of that because it's so loud out here. I think we're gonna head in. So we are already checked in, as you can see from the fact that Anna's already in the room. So we'll, uh, we'll hover through here. Beverages, we got a beverage from there before. Anna stocked up on all the supplies that she obviously forgot. I think it was just a razor this time that she forgot. She did leave her passport at home. It's taken us three hours to get here because we got halfway and had to go back to uh, pick up Anna's passport. But that, I guess, is where breakfast is served in the morning. It does say 6.30 on there, but the lady at reception did say it's 4 a.m. So I'm going to believe her rather than that sign. And then we are just down here on the ground floor in room 335, which is this one. You have no idea how long I've wanted to do that shot for. We did the shot. Next time I won't make such a big deal about it. So time for a room tour. The first thing I notice as I come in is this secret little area that's got the iron a little thing to fill up the ironing water with and the hairdryer is in there as well. Obviously places to hang coats and whatnot. It's gonna be 28 degrees in Tenerife, so I've not brought a coat with me, which I'm probably gonna regret in the morning. <laughs> um, there we have mirror areas, like my new traveling trousers. I'm normally a jeans or chinos guy. I'm not sure how I feel about these, but comfort, no belt, which has got to be an advantage when it comes to airport security. Somewhere to put suitcases and stuff there. You can see why we struggled so much with the suitcases because we've got this enormous one next to Anna, plus her bag and her CPAP machine. Then over here, we've got my enormous one, my CPAP machine, my bag, and then a little carry-on suitcase, which is just full of camera gear. We are ridiculous, but this is our room. I mean, you're pre we're pretty ridiculous combined. Bearing in mind the original plan when we booked this was that we were just gonna have the one big case and put all of our clothes in there together and then carry a small carry on each. But we couldn't do that because of what happened when we went to Geneva and we realized Anna couldn't really do carry on luggage. So we did change the plan slightly to have more checked luggage, which at that point we could bring bigger luggage and bring more stuff. So it is kind of circumstance. So over here we have a chair, which Anna has already clearly made her own. Nice little swivel chair. Is it a comfortable swivel chair, Anna? It's going home with me. Excellent. We've got a little table for work and beverages and tripods and whatnot. Um, and then this little shelf here where we've got tea and coffee situation, twinings and Nescafe and milk in a in a sachet, which is always good fun. Kettle, of course, decent sized kettle actually. Is it filthy? How do you get into it? I mean, it's not the filthiest kettle in the world. Um, more plugs, TV. There's a, um, a decent amount of plugs. We've got two, three, I think we've got one over there. Four, Anna's complimenting the plug situation. There are actually a lot of plugs. <laughs> Bearing in mind, we both use CPAP <laughs> machines. So um, plugs at the side of beds are absolutely crucial for us. I know lots of people I'm that's important for these days because you want to be able to charge your phones at the side of the bed. But um, yeah, the fact we can both plug in our CPAP machines tonight is very handy. We also have the option of firm or soft pillows. Um, what does it say? The ones at the front are the soft ones, the ones at the back are the hard ones. So we will be soft one, <laughs> hard one. Okay, there is a difference. And if you want feather ones, which surely nobody in history has ever wanted, but if you do want feather ones, you can get them from reception. Uh, the bed itself, feels acceptable. And then this is that view that we were talking about from before we can open the curtains up again now, now that I'm not trying to control the light. And uh, there is that view of the back ends of the planes, which there's been nothing we've seen take off since we've been here. So I'm not sure we're gonna get a view of the runway, but we can certainly see the planes taxiing around, which is cool. 
Are you enjoying the view, airplane nerd? Um, I will when I get over there. <laughs> I just need to sit down and don't feel rubbish. Official bed review incoming. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, I mean, it's a bed. Is this my side? What side do I lie on? This is Anna's side. I'm testing Anna's side of the bed. You can just about see the planes from here, which is cool. Hello, airplanes. How are you doing? So the time now is just before five o'clock. We were able to check into the hotel from three o'clock, which was the original plan. But as mentioned, having to drive home when we were halfway here kind of added and changed the plans just a smidgen. So we had a subway on the way down at the services. We were asked if we wanted dinner here. Um, we probably we only had a subway like an hour ago, so I think we're probably going to miss dinner. We need to be up at 3 a.m. in order to be out of here for 4 a.m. So I'm going to try and get to sleep very early. I'm better at doing that than Anna is. I'm thinking I can still probably get my eight hours in if I really push it by just getting in bed at like six o'clock and I'll, be, I'll go to sleep and I'll be fine. That one back there, less so. But I've got noise cancelling headphones and an eye mask with me, so if she's still awake doing her thing, it's not the end of the world. But yeah, our plan is basically from here to, uh, to just settle down, literally just sleep, and then head out over to the airport first thing tomorrow morning, which will be the next video on the channel. That'll be our travel day, getting us to Tenerife. Cost-wise, coming to this hotel, it's cost £217 for us to have the hotel and the off-site airport parking for 11 nights. We did originally have a different setup booked, which was a little bit cheaper. So there are cheaper ways to do this, but they're not as convenient. So I think we had a 40 pound Premier Inn, which is a little bit further out, definitely a drive from the airport. And then I think it was 70 pounds to stay on the cliff side that we stayed on last time. Uh, if you want to see the cliffside, watch the Geneva video, the Geneva Travel Day video, you'll see that car park. We weren't big than, fans of that car park, dragging suitcases up and down hills on gravel, didn't really work for Anna. And this place was advertised, like I say, as being the nearest hotel to the terminal. So in my head, when we changed the booking, I had visions of us waking up tomorrow morning and literally just strolling across the road into the terminal, which bear in mind, I've flown from Luton before. I know there's not a hotel right next to the terminal. I don't know what made me think this one had suddenly appeared. So I don't know that if I'd have known exactly where it was and known we were gonna to have to get a taxi anyway, I don't know that I necessarily would have changed the booking because the original one, like I say, was about 110 pounds all in. For and the only extra inconvenience would have been we'd have parked at the Premier Inn tonight and then tomorrow morning driven to the cliffside car park and then got the shuttle bus, which would have taken us straight to the terminal. So that would have saved us even more money. So we wouldn't have had to have paid for the taxi, but we'd have had the added hassle of getting up that little bit earlier, having to drive out to the car park and do all the car park admin stuff. And then you're relying on the shuttle bus turning up at 4 a.m. So it felt like a little bit of extra stress. So although this way has cost a little bit more, if Anna was fully fit and didn't have a, a dodgy leg, I think this would be completely fine, convenient. Google Maps says it's only a seven minute walk to the terminal from here. And it is largely downhill from here to the terminal now. So I think in normal circumstances, this would be super duper convenient and probably worth the extra money. But it's fine. I don't know that I've stayed in a Holiday Inn Express before. Seems like a nice enough hotel. And it's a Hilton. And it's saying it's a Hilton, which is Hilton and Holiday Inn the same? I'm not sure they are. It Maybe they are. Hilton. Used to be a Hilton, she's saying. Um, and I certainly know, in my, based on my previous experience, it might have changed, it might be different because it's airport side. Um, I don't think we'd have been getting breakfast at 4 a.m. in a Premier Inn. So that's a nice touch. Probably not worth £100 when there's food in the airport, but it's a nice enough touch. So we're, we're happy enough with the situation. We're very excited to be heading off to Tenerife tomorrow. So I think we are going to leave this video here. Been a little bit of a different one, a little bit of a shorter one. Just really for anyone like us who are noobs to this whole travel thing, who are wondering what it's like to stay on the hotel and do the parking this way. It was something I wanted to know more about and there wasn't a video to tell me. So usually when I'm looking for a video and can't find one, that's a pretty good indication that I should go and make it because if this video had existed two weeks ago when we booked this, we might not have booked this because we'd have realized just how far away the hotel actually was. 
You live and you learn. We'll see you very soon. And next time we see you, we'll be on our way to Tenerife. So make sure you subscribe for that. Turn your notifications on. Thank you very much for watching. And toodle pip. Say bye-bye, Anna. Bye, Anna. There you go.